Hey Dad, it's Matt here. Just uh, want to give an update here on the KLR, what I've done so far to it, and what's going on. Forgive the dirtiness of the bike. I had it out a few days ago and haven't got to the car wash to get it hosed off all the bug remnants, but uh, that's the windshield I put on it. Um, it's a 21 inch, I believe, and it comes from a company called National. It works really good, changes everything. Uh, this little space here is, so you put your fingers behind it, that makes a nice breeze up underneath. So it keeps the pressure down on the front, but also creates a nice pocket of uh, calm behind this windscreen and the fairing itself. So, um, but also keeps it nice and cool. So there's plenty of air that comes up from the bottom here through this section. You get some air that comes here, but it keeps things nice and cool and nice and nice and calm. So it's like a calm, um, almost like you have a vent on in your car when you're riding. So not the full force of the wind. And if it was raining out, it should keep the rain up and over for the most part. Um, but that has worked out really, really well. So I, I have that done. Um, and let's see, what else did I do here? Uh, ch -ch -ch. I thought there was a couple things I did. I did the windscreen, that was the big, the big one at first. Um, I, the thing I did today is I actually put a center stand on it. So a company called Happy Trails, and they make these specifically for the KLR. I actually ordered it two months ago and it actually came in this Wednesday. Um, and there it is, it's installed and the bike's up on it right now. But as you see, it, it bolts up to where the foot pegs attach. So super, super solid. And you can see how solid the frame is on this bike's big steel, big steel frame, um, heavy duty. Everything on this bike is super heavy duty. It's uh, you know, way overbuilt. And they call these things tanks for a reason. Um, but that's a regular kickstand. And that just bolted right up. They sent you two new bolts, uh, four bolts, two for each side. So you replace the standard bolts bolt that right up through, bolts into what, the mounts on the frame. Um, works excellent. Here's, here's my little skull thing. It's a little kind of silly thing, but uh, you see the bike in its full regalia here with the bags on it and everything. And let's see here. Just kind of just from the other side here. Bike does have a presence. It's uh, you know, not the most powerful bike in the world by any stretch of imagination. It's adequate. Um, you know, in the realm of uh, all things vehicles on the road, it's it's still quicker than most cars and stuff like that. It doesn't have a whole lot in the top end, but um, it's very, very adequate power. Um, good torque. And, and, and this, bike, this bike is happy to cruise, you know, if you jump up on the highway. Um, 65, 70 is not a problem. Um, and it'll do that all day if you had to. I mean, where it's happiest is probably 660, 55, 60, which is where I am most of the time anyway with all my back road riding, um, which is where I find myself all the time on this bike. And most bikes, I try to stay the hell off the highway. I am going to do the 16-tooth uh, front sprocket upgrade on it, which will... Uh, help the overall gear ratios, uh, not to increase the top end, but to lower that RPMs in top gear. Um, it takes about 500 RPMs off at top speed. So um, from what I understand from other people who have these bikes and all the forms, that 16 tooth upgrade, and a lot of guys do with di all different bikes, you know, just upgrade that front tooth or front sprocket with one tooth and uh, that, that'll take the uh, ability for this bike, if you're up on a highway, put you in that 70, 75 mile an hour range. It, it, I mean, it could go a little faster, but comfortably in that 70, 75 mile an hour range, should you have to be up on the highways for you know any length of time. And if you had to, it would make it ability to just cruise like that all day long if you wanted to. Um, I mean, I don't want to necessarily be on the highways, but my overall thought process is, hey, just uh, anything that kind of 
makes it a little easier for this engine to work would, would be great and help the longevity of everything. Um, it's, it's not a very stressed engine anyway, but um, if I reduce just a little bit, keeps things cooler, keeps things nicer. Those are the fog lights there. Those light up the, those light up the night, let me tell you. <laughs> As you can imagine, the, so, and then the last thing I'm gonna do, well, I'll do the sprocket and this, this item is this big old giant exhaust can. Um, you know, it'd be too hard to see underneath, but it's a monster. I, I guess this thing with the catalytic converter inside, I don't know if I can even, if you can see that big giant, how it goes in there. Um, it's a 14 pounds, a little over 14 pounds. Yoshimura makes a very nice replacement muffler. Um, it looks really good. It's, you know, all stainless steel. Um, and then with a center pipe and it, it bolts right up. It's not very expensive and I, from, it just, it's not to give the bike a bunch of more power or anything like that. It just helps this bike to breathe much better. Um, makes it more responsive. The ECU adapts really well to it. Um, so it's, it's just a much better functioning, much, it gets a little more efficient runs cooler because it's just getting rid of all that exhaust right away instead of having it backed up inside and pushing back down towards the head and everything else so again you know these nice little aftermarket things but uh you know, back up here and get you a good side profile or well, there she is right there the big old big old klr yeah i'm having a ball with the spike i just thought i wanted to show you the uh the center stand and windscreen and um you know can what, what i the last two things i plan to do with this thing that's really gonna just make it absolutely perfect so hope all's well and i will talk to you later bye